What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. What a big performance by Paul George and the return and the comeback for Paul George. It was a magical performance by him. Definitely, um, you know, big time. Definitely a magical performance by Paul George, helping the team uplift them with the epic comeback of a 25-point deficit. And, you know, the Clippers been known for this all year. You know, they've been doing this all season long, man, with or without Kawhi or PG or whoever. They've been doing it all year long. And, you know, the reports last night in the game, that Norman Powell is trying to make a comeback, coming back soon is definitely huge for the Clippers and Clippers Nation. Um, I'm not sure, you know, how far they can go with those two, but I mean, they can go, they, they can make some noise in the playoffs. They can definitely disrupt some things and, and you know, um, catch somebody, you know, slipping in the playoffs, I believe, which is definitely good for the Clippers because I think it'll allow Kawhi a little bit more time to rest and then make a decision whether he wants to come back. And based upon everything I'm hearing, it's a go. Kawhi Leonard definitely wants to come back and contribute and be, you know, the guy and, and, and you know, come back and be the player he was before he went out, you know. So if um, if all's a go, then, I mean, you know, definitely go with that. I mean, he, you know, Paul George played really good last night, though, 34 points, six, six assists. You know, he really started getting into his rhythm like that second half, you know, when they were down still. And, you know, he really kind of put the team on his back. And that's what this team been missing. This team has been missing that uh, that guy, that superstar, that star type player to, you know, uplift them at times when they fall because they have moments in games where they just don't have it. You know, like I said, role players, they can do a lot of good things. But they can't do everything. They can't do it all. I mean, Paul George got some key steals, key defensive plays, you know, hit some big threes, big step backs, you know, things like that. And, um, you know, the Utah Jazz, you know, I just never really respected them that much anyway. I always said they're they're, they're just a team that, you know, folds, you know, under pressure to me. They're, they're just a team that's not built to win championships. Um I mean, hey, it was like that back in the day, too. I mean, they were great. They were good enough to make, you know, the NBA Finals way, 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 way back in the day when they played Jordan, but they never won it. And that's the way I've always looked at the Utah Jazz, you know, a team that never could just win it, you know. So, like I said, big out, the big shout out to Paul George for playing the way he did. It was an unbelievable comeback for him. And, you know, it definitely, um, you know, raised a lot of, you know, the, the energy level in the building and everybody was just so into it. And it was uh, a really good win for the Clippers. I mean, they lost like five straight before that. And, you know, to have him come back, you know, with that injury and he comes back with a 34 point performance like that was definitely huge for the Clippers, huge for them, you know. So um, definitely a big game for Paul George. You know, when you come back off injury like that, you want to get your, your feet up under you. You want to get going. You want to get that rhythm. And he found the rhythm, you know, I'm saying, um, like I said, in that second half, even when the Utah Jazz were still making shots, you know, Donovan Mitchell was, um, you know, he, he he had caught fire too. Donovan Mitchell was uh, pretty much unstoppable at some point, you know, in that game. But, you know, Paul George just kept at it, kept at it, you know, picked his matchups, you know, when, it, you know, once, once he got the matchup he wanted, he would take advantage. He had, um, you know, go bear on him a few times, hit a step back three a couple times, you know, um, had switched off and had um, Mike Conley on him, hit a few big shots, you know, on him, got his rhythm going. And then it was pretty much, you know, the rest was history from there, you know, but it was um, definitely, you know, a good comeback for him. And I think he was only supposed to be limited to like 20 minutes, you know, of playing time. But, you know, Ty Lue just took a chance to let him play longer, probably because Paul George wanted to play longer and wanted to help his team, you know, win because he saw that Utah could be had. And, you know, just like last year in the playoffs, it was the same thing. You know, uh, Paul George was struggling against Utah and Terrence Mann comes out with a 39 point game and disrupts their party and that's exactly what utah seems to allow teams to do you know they just find ways to help themselves lose big games that mean a lot and to me this is a big game for them because like i said you know paul george is coming back off his injury you know if you can go in there and ruin their night and ruin their ruin their party rain on their parade you know that would have been you know huge for the utah jazz and their confidence but you know in a 
highly televised, televised game like this, you know, Paul George comes up big at the moments where you need him to, and Donovan Mitchell doesn't. And, you know, um, they it, that that's that's how the cookie crumbles. That's how it goes, you know. Sometime, so you know, it was um, it was a great game, though it really was all the way around. You know, I thought it was a really good game, but at the same time, you know, um, the better team won. You know, and uh, Paul George was a big reason of that. And you know, at this point, looking at you know what Paul George did and everything like that, it just you know gave the crowd a boost, a boost of energy they haven't had in months. You know, since he left in December with that uh, elbow injury, and he looked pretty good. You know, he took some hits. You know, he went to the basket. He was aggressive. You know, um, he shot pretty pretty efficiently. You know, and um, I I wanted to see him take some hits. You know, on that elbow just to see how he would feel. Just to see if you know he would feel like you know any bruises from it. You know, anything like that. And he played through it. You know, he went to the basket several times, you know, and a couple times he went up against Rudy Gobert in the basket, challenged him in the paint, you know, made a layup over him, you know, that um, that got the crowd going and got his momentum going along with the team. So the Clippers had definitely have to be, you know, excited about that. Definitely have to be, you know, um, you know, fired up about that and, and definitely better their uh, chances going forward. And I thought that, um, you know, Paul George's aggressiveness really, you know, helped the Clippers with the comeback and just seeing him on the floor really helped them a lot. Reggie Jackson hit some big shots, too. I'm not going to lie. Luke Kennard hit some big shots as well. I mean, it was just an all around collective effort. Then you had Hardenstein, you know, do what he did. And, you know, it was um it was a really entertaining game. But for the most part, I'm glad to see PG back. I'm glad to see him, you know, playing his game and you know hitting his rhythm a little bit I felt like in the first half you know he kind of you know shot off from taking over the game a little bit you know because he was trying to I guess play his way back into the game you know letting everybody else kind of eat a little bit second half he kind of took over and um you know the rest was history from there and it was uh like I said it came down to the bitter end basically so I mean it was um were very entertaining but um even more entertaining that paul george was the man of the night you know because he really deserved it and uh, he really played like and he really showed that you know he um you know he, he he can definitely help this team in a lot of ways you know that can you know help them going forward because that playing tournament it, it is going to be it's going to be tougher than what a lot of people think you know so i mean you're definitely going to need paul george and rhythm they're definitely going to need Paul George playing the way he's supposed to. And, you know, last night is just, a, you know, a, a reminiscent point of, you know, what type of player he is and what he means to this team and what he can do to help them, you know, going forward. You know, they need to finish out the season, you know, on a winning record. I think they're two games under 500. So, you know, Paul George can definitely help with that as well. And um, hopefully everybody else comes back. You know, uh, Norm Powell should be next. And then they say Kawhi should be right after. You know, hopefully that um, is the case because they're definitely going to need him as well. I mean, you know, when they get into the playoffs and go against Memphis and all the other teams like that, you're going to need all the firepower you can get then because, uh, you know, those top seeds, you know, they, they, they're going to be tough. So, but um, definitely a great comeback for Paul George. Definitely happy for him and definitely hope that he continues to do what he did last night and just, you know, put the team on his back when need be. And, um, you know, hopefully they can move forward in the right direction. But hey, that's my take on everything. You leave any comments in the comment section as always. And hey, Callie out.